right. I am happy to be joined with the CEO of Haven Life Sciences, Mr. Tim Moore, and as well, Derek Walsh from Revive Therapeutics. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me here today. Good morning. Great to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I want to get into this right away. I want to talk about the news that was announced here earlier today about you, the two companies, Revive Therapeutics and Haven Life Sciences, entering into partnership agreement. So, Tim, we'll start with you. What does this opportunity present for Haven Life Sciences? Well, it, it's important. It's an important first deal for us. Um, we are focused on science-based uh, and, and evidence-based development of uh, GMP compounds to support the industry. And this is a validation of our business model that we've assigned our first supply agreement with a company that's focused on innovation. And, you know, it's exciting for us in the early days of this nascent industry to actually be able to take an idea and convert it into a business uh, deal that will quickly lead to transactions and revenue for, for both companies. So we're excited for it. Well, that's uh, big news, obviously, to say, least. And Derek, like, how does this benefit Revive Therapeutics with this uh, partnership agreement? Right now, Revive Therapeutics is heavily entrenched in the, uh, in the research and development of our oral thin film. And the one thing we found is finding supply of, of good quality GMP grade psilocybin is, uh, is inherently difficult at this time. And we're really proud to have a, a supply agreement in place so that we can support our research and our ongoing studies of psilocybin at the University of Wisconsin. It's a, it's a great opportunity for us and uh, Haven Life Sciences. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's important. That Right now, there's so many studies in the field. This, this yeah. space has been very busy with research, but yeah. the researchers have been forced to rely on synthetic psilocybin, which is expensive and also is problematic for the people that are, are seeking an alternative to pharmaceuticals and are looking for a plant-based, naturally derived compound. So our focus is on a supply chain of naturally derived compounds, and we're thrilled that Revive uh, saw the value and that was, was eager to partner with us. So, like, gentlemen, walk me through this. Uh, how did the whole partnership come together? Meaning, like, what did you see that was missing currently in the industry? And how is each company, like, basically filling the narrative based off of this announcement? Derek, we'll begin with you. Well, right now, Revive is really heavily, like I said before, working on the uh, development of our thin films. And we found it would be interesting to study not only the synthetic analogs, but studying the naturally derived analogs and working with both compounds. And we recognize a need for, for both in the industry, but more specifically, when we look at social media and we look at what people are looking for, especially the general public, we found a great need to have naturally derived compounds in our portfolio and working with them in the laboratory studies that we're doing. It's a truly a, a unique play to the market that I don't think has been done yet. So what is the partner? Sorry, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, and, and you know, like I was saying earlier, it, this business is evolving quickly. And what, what we recognize is that consumers need a safe and reliable supply. Yeah. The uh, compounders and researchers need a safe and reliable supply. And importantly, the public policy people need a safe and reliable supply. So, you know, that's, just, that's the gap that we see Haven Life filling is, is a, a provider of, a, of a, a sustainable supply chain of naturally derived compounds. So most importantly, what does this do, I guess, for the everyday person that is potentially, you know, struggling with mental illness? And I guess, what's the market upside uh, pertaining to this, you know, overall agreement that you both entered into? Tim, we'll start with you. Well, you know, mental health is a, is a large and growing issue. I mean, the stats are 11% of the population has some sort of mental health issue. And over the decades, there's been a lot of clinical research done on psychedelics that shows effectiveness against um, anxiety, depression, PTSD, substance abuse, and a number of other things. Um, so, you know, the, there's legitimate science there. The supply chain hasn't been there to support that's coming. Um, and so we can offer hope to people. We can offer hope to an alternative to pharmaceuticals that you know, people um, have rejected because of um, side effects like weight gain, sexual dysfunction, dependency, a bunch of other things. And the, there is no evidence of that with the psychedelics. What, what we need people like Revive and other researchers to do is to determine what's the appropriate dosing and other therapies that need to go along in order to help people to deal with these issues and, and improve their quality of life. So, you know, that's the promise that we offer is there's, we've got all these people that are suffering and frankly, in the, in the face of COVID, we see that there's going to be, you know, an echo pandemic of additional mental health right. issues, you know, right? 50% of the survivors of, uh, of COVID apparently have anxiety or depression. You know, Chris, yeah. Chris Cuomo was on a show recently. So there's, it's a growing issue. 
And so that's, that's what we see is promise for those people seeking relief from things where they've been unable to get treatment. If I'm an investor and I'm looking at this, what should I be focusing on? What is the type of thing that's obviously going to garner my interest based on the research that's going to be implemented through all this? I think looking at the, the research and the work that we're doing today with regards to psilocybin, you know, Revive Therapeutics, we really have a great vehicle. You know, our, our tannin uh, kydosin uh, composite for our oral thin film serves as a wonderful vehicle. And we kind of, uh, we view that as the, uh, the Uber for the oral thin film technology. We can add and, and remove and change compounds within that profile to be able to support other psychedelic compounds, such as LSD, MDMA, um, and DMT and things of that nature. And those things are really important to us, knowing that the market opportunity is there for us in the sense that the research is supported, the data, you know, we look at what came out from Hopkins, that study onto itself was uh, one big igniter of business right now, as well as the celebrity culture around microdosing. But when we look at what's gone on with the, the pandemic, the pandemic has really amplified the mental health concerns that are within society right now. And I think once this pandemic has concluded, we're going to face down another subsequent pandemic as a direct result of COVID-19 with regards to mental health. And it's really important for companies like ours, like Having Life Sciences and Revive Therapeutics to be working together in a time where we all need to be able to share information. We all need to be able to show results and we need to be able to show the market that we're gonna be there for you when you need us. And that I think is a, the narrative to take away from this. Well, you bring up a good point about, sorry, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, Derek makes a good point about their, their, their thin film delivery system and their ability to swap out compounds um, and to administer them, which is terrific and, and harmonious with what we're doing. Because as we build out our library of compounds, because it's a naturally derived compound, unlike the synthetics, which are just a molecule, the naturally derived compounds provide the, the promise of the entourage effect because there's all those other chemicals that are available there. So as we take those extracts, we can create isolates, that's fine, but we're also gonna be able to create a different range of broad spectrum um, compounds for Revive and others to test. And, and like I said, this, this thin film delivery system is a perfect vehicle for testing mm -hmm. those different uh, profiles. How, like when you say it's gonna be interesting, can you explain to me further, like what are the benefits from it all? Well, what we don't know is what are the impacts to the, to the um, brain function of these, of these um, other chemicals? How much is psilocybin and how much is it uh, terpenes and other elements that are in there? And only after you have a GMP process to, to predictably deliver that consistently so that it can be tested or you're going to be able to get some results. So we, we think that these studies are going to be able to refine what, what dosing and what combination of ingredients is it that provides the optimum treatment. Derek brought up a good point. Uh, Tim, I just wanted to kind of add to that. Tim brings up a, a really an amazing narrative that we haven't really discussed yet is that when we examine a, a synthetic compound versus a naturally derived one, the synthetic compound that comes down to an isolate is usually like 99% purity. It's a very high purity in order to get the compound to crystallize. But when you get a compound that, that, that is that pure, you kind of eliminate a lot of the entourage effect. You eliminate all of the other molecules that really make molecules spin and make them interact with the body. And granted, we have data on both sides of the fence, but Tim's correct in saying that we don't know enough about these yet and we have to do the homework around them to find out mm -hmm. what those results are. We've seen in some studies, especially in brain injury patients, where we see uh, psilocybin and other psychedelic compounds generating new neurological pathways within the brain. Well, is it the compound like psilocybin directly, or is it another compound working, coinciding and reacting with the psilocybin in that particular molecule as a naturally derived one that's actually making the system drive forward? So we're trying to determine what these molecules do, what their core effects are, as well as trying to study them where they are in the brain. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a little bit, there's a lot of headway in front of us, but it's great that we're knocking down the walls one by one. Well, I have to ask, you know, this partnership agreement, like, is this a trend of things to come where you're going to see more companies partnering like you both, uh, both companies? And if so, like, does this give you in some ways like a first mover advantage? Like how should, you know, consumers and, and investors read into this whole announcement? Well, I think what it, what it does is for us, it validates that, that researchers are seeking a naturally derived compound library. So it's a, it's a validation of our business plan, our business model, 
And so we're excited. And yeah, we see additional partnerships coming along and that, that is, this is a model for what will happen so that people will have that reliable supply. Because we, we think that, first of all, the, the cost of the synthetic is likely to stay quite high because it's very complicated to do. Not right. many people are doing it. And that the supply of naturally derived is going to stay relatively limited as well. Because again, very complicated to get licensed to do it. And so, you know, we're, we're, um, we've got our, our Section 56 exemption, which is allowing us to do our foundation research. We've applied for our LD, which will allow us to sell those compounds. And importantly, it will allow us to export them. As Derek said, their research is taking place at the University of Wisconsin. So for us, the first mover advantage is, as far as we know, we're the first company to announce uh, a deal where we're, we're planning to export uh, psilocybin from Canada to the United States. We haven't heard anyone else say they're doing that yet. So we're excited to be able to make that announcement this morning. Should people look into that, a sign of things to come? Like, uh, could we see legislation towards uh, psilocybin, uh, let's say in the US or in Canada uh, within the next 12 to 24 months? Not, it's not gonna be that fast. I mean, you know, the, the legislature, see the public policy is evolving. You know, we've seen first four people in Canada that have had exemptions for end of life treatment of anxiety. If you, if you look back at what happened with cannabis six, eight years ago, it started with a handful of people. It snowballed right. into groups and identifiable groups. So we'll see that grow and grow. But the point where we'll actually see um, a compound that's been approved by the FDA or Health Canada as a pharmaceutical is, is more than a couple of years in the future. I, I wouldn't want to bet on a specific timeline other than I'm quite certain it's going to be more than two years. Yeah. Quite certain. But the conversations are becoming bigger and bigger, would you not say? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah. We, we look at this as an opportunity to fulfill our, our needs as a company. We need supply. We need to be able to get consistent supply from one specific company that we can build a working relationship with. When we look at what we're doing with our oral thin films and we look at the research that we're doing, it's important for us to have supply chain in place because at this stage, it's very difficult to find supply. And that's why we're really excited about this is for Revive Therapeutics, we've now got a great source where we can get the molecules that we need. We can get the psychedelic compounds and we really look forward to the future because one of the things we're really open to is conducting more research on other psychedelic compounds and similar studies that we're already doing. So it's a really easy way for us. And with the university, we have the opportunity with licensing and, um, you know, working with a great team of people down there that are eager to participate. Yeah. Well, be interesting. And, and, you know, if you look at, if you look at the legitimacy of the research that's being done, public policy uh, makers can't ignore it. You've got John Hopkins, which Derek mentioned, you've got yeah. NYU, um, you've got King's College in the UK, uh, you've got the University of New England. The US military just invested $17 million in a four-year study on the use of uh, psychedelics for the treatment of PTSD. So, you know, the, the evidence is being built, public policy can't ignore that, and we see that will continue to evolve. And there's clearly a path that's being formed here towards the legalization of compounds as pharmaceuticals. Right. And a global pandemic on top of that too, right? <laughs> yes. Tim, Derek, appreciate your time. Congrats on the announcement. We'll be watching both companies very closely. All the best and let's keep in touch. Sounds good. Thank you again. Okay. Stay safe. Yeah, you Take as care. well. Take care.